By now a lot, if not everyone knows about iOS 14 and its new features and not so new features. From having a new widget system, a new app library, able to reply messages on iMessage just like it is on WhatsApp, and many more. But what about these hidden features? Now I've been using iOS 14 um, on my iPhone XS since WWDC ended two weeks ago and I must say I have discovered some. My name is KJOS and today we'll be looking at the 10 hidden features that you guys will care about in iOS 14. So let's get this party started. Now right before we get into this video, if you're new here, thank you for stopping by and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you can get notified when I drop videos like this every week. I am almost on 1000 subs and I hope I can get there in very good time. Also, you can check out my Patreon account in the link in the description below. It has all the information on how you can support my YouTube journey. And now that's out of the way, let's look at iOS 14. First things first, FaceTime. Now this is one of the best apps to use in terms of video call. In the past or with iOS 13 and other operating systems, you need to look at the camera to have some sort of eye contact with the person you're speaking with. Now with iOS 14, the new FaceTime feature is called eye contact, which translates to looking at your screen like you're looking at the camera. Now how has Apple achieved this? I'm really not sure. My guess it's an AI or machine learning system that is in the phone or something of the sort. Honestly, I really have no idea, but it's a lot better than looking at your camera when you want to look at the person you're talking to. Now to turn this on, head over to the settings, FaceTime option and it's right at the bottom. Now trust me, it's the little things that make everything worthwhile. Now this particular feature is very, very welcome in my opinion and it's called the back tap. Now the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL were my main daily drivers for a very long time and one of the shortcuts to the camera anyway was pressing down the, the home button twice, which is very simple yet very effective. Now with iOS 14, it's not quite the same but it gives the same function. Backtap basically allows you to create shortcuts by tapping the back of your phone. So you have two options, double tapping or triple tapping. With these functions, you can choose what app you quickly want to get into. So from screenshots to app switcher to a lock screen to enabling Siri and many more. You can turn this on by heading over to the accessibility options and settings, then touch and right down at the bottom, you see back tap. So for me, when I discovered this double tapping were for screenshots, as you can see, and triple tapping was pretty empty for me. But even with double tapping, it was like the worst decision ever because it kept taking screenshots unprovoked. I would drop my phone, it'd take a screenshot. I would hold my phone in my hand, it'd take a screenshot. And it kept doing this over and over again and it kept being very annoying. So I think Apple needs to remap the back tap feature to say the home button. Maybe double tap and the home button takes it to a shortcut of your choice, just how it is on the Pixel series. Now, I understand this is just the first uh, beta that has come out. So obviously as time goes by, they will keep implementing new updates and new updates. Hopefully, the double, I don't like the double tap feature. Probably, I hope, I'm hopefully rather, they will put that on the home button. So let's see. So moving on with the app library, we've all been here before where we have an app on our phone that we don't like on a regular basis or we don't even use on a regular basis, but we don't want to delete them because we don't know when next we're going to use them. Now with the new iOS 14 app library, you can delete them from your home screen and it will just appear in your app library, moving it away from your all seeing eye, more or less. Now, to do this, before we even go there, a little sidebar, people that actually have iOS 14, don't you think the um, app library is pretty far away? I personally don't use it because I think it's far away from my home screens, because maybe because I have four home screens, but personally, I think Apple should move it back a bit to one of the first tabs you see when you open your phone, but personally, that's just me. Anyway, hiding your apps is pretty straightforward. You don't need to delete the apps and the data itself. All you have to do is act like you want to delete the app and your phone will ask you if you want to delete it or add it to your app library. You can also search for the same app using the search bar if your app library is pretty clunky and messy. So widgets aren't exactly new to iOS. It's been there for a while and it's been more or less one dimensional and not really customizable. But with iOS 14, Apple saw what their competition was doing and they more or less implemented it into their operating system. But with smart stacks, it's kind of different. You can basically keep stacking widget after widget into one very big widget that allows you to see through different apps. So like your reminders, your Apple Music, your YouTube Music, your weather, and so many others. You can also edit each widget as much as you like, such as changing what is in your reminders or even removing the widget anytime you want. Now, it's been long overdue for Apple, but some people can't wait to redesign their home screen. By the way, you can also um, make your home screen just one big widget of home screens if you want to. Like I said earlier, Apple takes it directly from their competition, which is very much welcome, but like it is on Android, I most likely will never use it. Sound recognition is something that affects your control center directly. Now, with sound recognition, it constantly is listening through your phone and lets you know when certain sounds are being made that you may not be able to hear. 
All you need to do is head over to the control center in your settings app and toggle it on and you're good to go. When you actually go in your control center on your phone, you will see a little icon at the bottom that is letting you know that it's switched on. I can imagine this will help people with hearing disabilities because it lets you know when a fire alarm goes off, a siren, a smoke screen, cat, dog, doorbell, a door knock and many others. Now with iOS 14, you can now mirror your front camera. On iOS 13 and older operating systems, when you take a picture, it always comes out inverted, so you have to use a third-party app like Snapchat or Instagram to take your pictures, so it comes out the right way. This is just a great hidden feature that will make a difference when taking selfies. As always, you have to head over to the settings app, the camera option under the composition toggle, mirror, front camera, and you're good to go. Also within the camera interface on older phones like the iPhone XS like mine, you can now change the frame rate right there when you're trying to record a video. It makes everything a lot easier as opposed to going to the settings to change the frame rate every single time. So you can change from HD 30 and 60 to 4K 30 and 60 frames per second. Like I said earlier, it's the little things that make the experience worthwhile. Another nice hidden feature is the back button. Now if you're like me, you sort of get lost in your settings app in terms of doing so many things at once and you're very unsure where a particular setting was. A nice little feature in iOS 14 lets you see your finger footprint within your settings app. All you have to do is just tap and hold the back button and it shows where you were, pre where you were previously and other places you visited. It's very similar to Windows and Mac in terms of documents and file location. A new option is shortcuts on iOS 14 that is great I can help you when charging your phone or when you're on low power mode and it's pretty much automatic. It more or less helps you do two things at the same time. So if you're charging your phone, you can tell your phone to do a few things for you like turning airplane mode on or do not disturb. This helps the phone charge a bit faster when there's no data or Wi-Fi on. All you have to do is head over to the shortcuts, then automation, and set a new automation you want your phone to perform when it's on low battery, charging or reaches a certain battery level. Now last but not least, we have picture in picture mode. Now this has been a long overdue um, feature in the iOS ecosystem for a very long time. Now this gives you the ability to watch whatever you're watching, say on YouTube or Netflix, on your iPhone and perform other things as you're watching. Now, we've seen this on the Android side of life, so it was only a matter of time before Apple implemented this on their iPhones. So far, I have tried this on YouTube, Netflix, and it works very seamlessly. You can reduce and increase the size to any form you want. You can slide it out of the screen while the sound keeps playing if it takes too much space. And it's just great for people who want to use their phone for multiple things. In conclusion, iOS 14 isn't a total revamp of the operating system. It just has a few tweaks here and there that make it worthwhile. I don't really um, advise anybody to get this because this is a developer beta. You can also wait for the public beta that is out next month. But if you want to take that risk, I put a link in the description for everyone that wants to get iOS 14 on their phones. Just remember, it gets worse before it gets better. So what are your thoughts on iOS 14? Are you going to get it? Is it worth getting? Comment below and let me know. And as always, if you like this video, clicking the like button is the best way to help me out. And if you're new here, you should please consider subscribing to the channel as I release videos like this every week. And the best time to see them is through a subscription. Thanks for watching. My name is KJOS and I'll catch you guys in the next one where we talk all things tech.